do you see how, how do you see progress in the reprogramming field? It does. It seems it, a. It seems very promising, and also I must admit there's there's uh, kind of more companies getting into it right now. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I mean, what would you see as like the end goal in I don't know ten years? I, I know that's a difficult question. <laughs> Well, it, it's a difficult question, but uh, at the same time, it's not in the sense that I really truly believe that uh, transient reprogramming era uh, or this idea of resetting the epigenetic landscape of the, of the cells to a more youthful state is, is, is has, has an unlimited potential. Uh, I I know for a fact that you know this idea uh, can can be applied virtually to any cell type in the in the body. And the more we study the process of aging, the more we study the, the, the pathologies, the different pathologies, their features and so on, the more we understand also how aging uh, happens, what, what it means at the molecular level, uh, the more leverages we're gonna have to be able to then reverse or, or to revert those, those, uh, uh, those changes uh, from, from, you know, from, from happening and bring them back in time. So again, the concept of resetting the epigenetic landscape of age cells to a more youthful state uh, is uh, applicable to any cell type uh, in the in the body. So I am absolutely positive that uh, uh, it can be era uh, for some cell types, or it can be a different types of mod or different types of reprogramming, meaning achieved in a, in a different way with a different cocktail of, of, of factors and so on, or, or even with small molecules at some point. But I think that this idea of resetting the epigenetic landscape to a more youthful state is gonna is gonna be a revolution, uh, and is gonna be really uh, is gonna be a game changer uh, for a, a variety of different uh, uh, aging associated indications. Uh, so, what other technologies do you see as being really interesting in the kind of longevity area? Well, there are there are there are quite a few I think that are that are interesting. Uh, probably one one of the definitely one of the most exciting uh, is uh, is analytics uh, uh, because I, I think uh, despite despite the fact that probably uh, some of the companies that have been working in this space that haven't been you know so successful, but I think also part of that is really to due to the fact that we still do not fully understand the process of, of senescence uh, in its complexity. Uh, and I think there is a lot of work that still needs to be need to be done to really fully understand the biology of that of that process. Uh, but senolytics or the, the idea that you can then, once you have characterized the bad stem, uh, senescent cells, uh, the idea that you can then target them specifically and uh, remove them from, from the organ, uh, I think that it's a very interesting and exciting idea uh, because the senescent cells, or at least some of them, uh, really induce a, a, an inflammatory uh, profile in the in the body <coughs> that have <coughs> very bad outcomes uh, for 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 aging, uh, inflammation, and so on. So I think that the, the whole the whole idea, the whole concept behind that, is is very exciting. Um, then there is a number of other of other uh, opportunities. For example, dietary supplementation, metformin, for example, is 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 having a lot of interesting and exciting um, results. Um, uh, not to forget the, the the idea of, for example, uh, generating new tissues. For example, from from induced pluripotent stem cells or from from stem cells in, in general, the idea that you can really replenish or or or, or reinvigorate the the tissues with freshly derived or freshly um, differentiated uh, uh, tissues done, for example, in vitro, that's also very exciting. So I think that there is a lot of weapons uh, in, the, in that, that we, we will be able to use in, in the future. And ERA, ERA, of course, is one of them. Uh, but it's, it's, ERA is going to complement a number of other technologies that all together, I think, are going to really have uh, uh, a deep impact in the way we will be thinking about uh, um, aging or, or, or rejuvenation. <clears throat> Right. Although I, I do see ERA as being kind of different from many of them. I mean, like uh, small molecules and metformin, things like that, they will maybe slow down aging or, or, you know, help a little bit, but they don't rejuvenate in the way that ERA does, which, which yeah. seems like a much more fundamental 
uh, approach. No, absolutely. I, I I agree. I agree with that because ERA, ERA is probably the first technology that is really capable of of reversing uh, the process of aging. Uh, and uh, uh, so, yeah, I, I agree with you. Instead of it, it, it's gonna it's gonna delay or prevent the process of aging from happening because it really kind of uh, moves back the uh, the the clock of the of the cells. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So uh, where can people learn more about your work, both in the lab and at TurnBio? Yeah, well, TurnBio has, uh, you know, has a website, <laughs> turn.bio, very simple to remember. Uh, and then, of course, I have, I have my lab at, at Stanford, Stanford University. I'm in the Institute for Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine. Uh, and so, yeah, that's, that's where, where you can find me and uh, follow, follow all the, all the work. <clears throat> okay, we will link to those. Uh, yeah. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us today. It was uh, great meeting you again. And the technology you're working on is just so exciting. <laughs> thank you. It was very exciting to, 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 to talk about it. And thanks a lot for having me. Okay, thank you.